Hello, and welcome to Newsbeat. This is a brand new show from Hammers Chat where I'm going to be looking through my trusty old laptop here and basically sifting through a lot of your favourite social media sites, a lot of your favourite West Ham sites as well, and just having a look at news, not breaking news necessarily, but something that might have amused me, irritated me, that sort of thing, or just something that's vaguely interesting. So I've been looking through all the different accounts, I say, and there's a few things that have popped up in the last couple of weeks. Now, the first one is from, it was a tweet, it was a couple of weeks ago, was from West Ham Central, which is, for those of you that are on social media, it's quite a big um, Twitter account. Now, he managed to flag up a an article from Jim Daly, who's from The Mirror. And he'd written an article about the 10 most hated footballers. I think the, I'll bring it up now for you up on the screen. It's called the Love to Hate 11, the Premier League players that fans can't stand. And the reason that I brought it up was our own Mark Noble has made the top 10 in this. I'll, I'll read you exactly what he's written. An unpopular man in an unpopular team, which is obviously Noble in West Ham. He goes on to say, Jim Daly from the Mirror, the nastiest type of midfielder possible, masked under an East End cheeky chappy facade. West Ham fans understandably love the little terrier, and it's not hard to see why. Local lad who grew up two miles away from Upton Park, who's notched up 400 games for the club, but to fans of any other club, he's a dirty enforcer who will not only leave his foot in, he'll take it off, wrap it up, and send it to you in the post. Well, I mean, that's quite inflammatory stuff, really, isn't it? And I don't agree. I think it's actually quite harsh. But I'm looking at it from a West Ham perspective. Is Mark Noble really that hated? Is he in the top 10? Do other fans, when they come along, say, oh, we've got to watch out for that nasty Mark Noble bloke? I mean, you've got to look at there's other players on this list. There's people like Diogo Costa, who is a nasty piece of work. Um, Cesc Fabregas, who's really, really irritating. And, and Charlie Austin, you, you couldn't walk past Charlie Austin in the street without him trying to slide tackle you, it seems, sometimes. So I was a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit funny, really, to see Mark Noble. On that list. But hey-ho, there you go. Um, now, Mark Noble himself, he'd recently said that because Dimitri Payet had left, he wanted Manuel Lanzini to step up. He thought that Manuel Lanzini could step up. And his recent form would indicate that that certainly is the case. Here's a tweet here from Luke Malden. And it's something I'd not seen because I'm not on Instagram. And he's actually written, Manuel Lanzini's dad is honestly the best person on Instagram. He goes home and away with West Ham, just like us fans do. And I, I didn't know. Uh, you can see pictures of him here. He travels up, he sits in with the away fans. He joins in as a sing-song, travels up on the train um, and takes pictures and obviously posts them on his Instagram account. So thanks to Luke, because I never would have noticed that anyway. I just thought it was a nice little story, really. And... In the days when, you know, you've got pampered footballers and all the rest of it, probably a lot of these professional footballers get a number of complimentary tickets to each game. He probably doesn't need to do that. He could probably sit up in the comfort of corporate quite easily. It'd be quite an easy thing to arrange. But for him to decide to go on the train, come over from Argentina, I guess he's living here now, I just think it speaks a lot for him. And apparently Memo Lanzini's quite a nice lad as well. So, yeah, nice one. Good on them. Uh, Manuel Lanzini, as I said, sort of been asked by Mark Noble to take over the mantle of Dimitri Payet. Now, I know there's a few of you people who were probably quite cynical, probably scoffed when Dimitri Payet said he wanted to leave West Ham, but it wasn't for money. You laughed. Uh, he said he's going to take less money and he's gone over to Marseille. Well, I think he's proved a few of you wrong because Ethan flagged this up on his, um, on his Twitter account. And if you just look here... You can actually see that there's the man himself. Not only has he gone to Marseille for less money, he's clearly gone to the Marseille branch of B&Q and is on minimum wage. But from all reports I've seen so far, he's not stacking the shelves quite as well in France as he did when he was at um, Upton Park in particular. Now, another story which uh, which I, I, it's not really amusing. In fact, it's, it's, quite, it's quite sad, really, for the person involved. And this is a story about, what's his name, Ian Alger. Now, Ian was doing an accumulator bet type thing with, and it was, what was it? It was Sky Sports Super 6 game. 
no, I don't know an awful lot about betting. I think it was an accumulator and he had to get the Bournemouth result right and he, the Crystal Palace result. And I think he had to get the score lines. This was, this was the point with it. So it finished up when he had Reading was at 2-2. And for him to get a cool quarter of a million pounds, he just needed the West Ham result to go his way. Now, unfortunately, sort of Lanzini and Clary mucks it up for him a bit. Because if you remember, Lanzini squared the ball for Clary and it went in against Middlesbrough, I, I do believe. And yeah, quarter of a million pound, 250 grand went down the pan. Now, poor old Ian, he's had a stroke of bad luck there. But it wasn't all bad because Jeff Stellin had basically given him an extra £5,000 when you didn't win the accumulator bet. I think because he'd still got a lot of them right, he won 5000 Jeff Stelling, who's an all-round nice guy, really, isn't he? Took pity on him and bumped it up to ten grand. But So, sort of a bit unlucky, Ian, but you know what? You got ten grand, but having just been a few seconds away from having quarter of a million pounds, oh, bittersweet, really, mate. Bittersweet. Better luck next time on that one. On a slightly more serious um, issue, something that had popped up here. Now, this was about the bricks. Now, the bricks, if you remember the commemorative bricks, what would happen at Upton Park was people would purchase a brick, perhaps to remember a loved one or to commemorate a significant event. And what had happened was no procedure was put in place for when Upton Park got knocked down. So these bricks could be basically returned to their owners. I mean, the memorial garden was well taken care of, but there didn't there seemed to be a lack of foresight where the bricks were concerned. So what's happened is um John Joe, who's a, a, what is a fundraiser extraordinaire really, isn't he? Quite a remarkable young man. He has got together with a group of volunteers and also the construction company. I think it's Barra, apologies if it's if it's not and what they've done is they agreed to go sifting back through the rubble. They've got as many of these bricks out as they can. So as uh, basically John Joe and his fantastic team can try and give them back to their rightful owners. Now what John Joe's done, he's set up a Facebook page. And if you can just read it here, it says 643 inscribed bricks salvaged from Upton Park so far. Uh, if you've had a brick or you had a brick when it was there, then go to Bowling Brick Salvage on Facebook. That's Bowling Brick Salvage on Facebook. And I think what he's done there, he's printed up a load of pictures of the bricks and maybe you can inquire with them. Go on there and maybe, you know, something that was probably quite special and quite sentimental to you could well be on there. So, you know, do you know what? Good on them though. Good on all of them for trying to make something like that happen because it wouldn't have happened otherwise, let's be honest. Uh, the Just very, very quickly on this, I'll come back to you with more details. This was a tweet from ex-employee. It was about the flags. They want to cover up those nasty bits of concrete that are surrounding the perimeter of the, um, of the ground. And the club have said that not only can you have flags in there, they'll actually take them in and put them up for you. I think you can actually take flags in there that are over two meters by two meters sorry under two meters by two meters anything bigger you've got to get permission from the club so uh they've also said that even if they do get a digital wrap and the stadium gets a sponsor they'll still find somewhere to put the flag so don't think that if you pay to get a flag made up it won't be displayed i'll get confirmation on that let me come back to you in a couple of weeks i'll do another one of these shows and i'll get back to you on that issue this was very interesting this was very funny and what preceded it was there was a steward in the West Ham end at the Man City game. And actually, I'm not sure it was a Man City game, but the steward had a Chelsea top on underneath. Now, as is the case with everything these days, people have got their mobile phones on them. So um, basically, somebody's taken a photo of this woman with her West Ham London Stadium jacket on, and then underneath, people can see a Chelsea top. Now, when they questioned uh, that it was flagged up, everyone posted the pictures they'd taken, said it was out of order and all that. The lady's excuse was that she wanted to basically get a sports top and what she'd done, got the sports direct first and it was the cheapest top there, was the Chelsea top, so she bought that one. So, yeah, she said it was a bit naive and a little bit ill-advised and, well, you're not joking really, are you? So, yeah, little things like that probably need to be ironed out. But what it did do was it brought to my attention something else that's been doing the rounds on social media. And as I say, there's some of you that won't be on social media and you won't have followed this, but 
there was at the Man City game in the West Ham end, a Manchester City fan stood in the West Ham end. Not only was he stood in the West Ham end, he didn't go incognito. He didn't try and hide the fact he was in there. He was brazenly in his Manchester City top. And you can see from the picture there, there he is, stood there. Uh, I mean, ironically, he seems to have a hood up, so perhaps he's trying to cover his identity, but I'm not being funny, mate. The Manchester City top has probably given you away. Now, the club have actually said that you're not allowed to do that. It's just not allowed. And if someone had reported him to the stewards, then he would have been kicked out. So sort of fair play to people for not doing so. But yeah, we don't want to see it. It's, it's, it's a bit inflammatory. Clearly, he's a man of flawed judgment, though, because he's a Manchester City fan. And... He could have got uh, David Silver's shirt. He could have got Sergio Aguero's shirt. Raheem Sterling. Um, Yaya Torre. No, this guy has decided to go for the Otamendi shirt. So not only is he stupid for going in to the ground with that one, he's probably stupid for choosing the wrong shirt. And somebody who's not a very good player anyway. However, he's not the most stupid fan that's gone in to a ground and gone and sat in the stands with an inappropriate shirt on. There's a guy in this clip here who's decided to go to a ball fight in a red shirt. I mean, unbelievable. Clearly, the ball has taken great offence to this. Go on, son. Go on. You can get him. You, there you go. Um, that's determination for you. Now, obviously, that's a level of stewarding by the ball that we're certainly not used to at the um, London Stadium. And I wouldn't certainly wouldn't suggest anybody would, would go and do that to our fans. But I just it, it's it's sort of a word of warning maybe when... A team that plays in red, maybe when Liverpool come and play at ours, then maybe we could have a couple of balls um, in that big space between the pitch and the stands and they could jump over and get them. Um, knees up Mother Brown. They staying on the stadium issue. They did an article on the stewarding. It's about West Ham match day stewards. And obviously there's a thousand new stewards at the ground. We had 300 at the bowling. And... Well, you're not going to get a thousand West Ham stewards. But what we do need is West Ham stewards, particularly those with experience of football in the West Ham end. And I think that that's trying to be done at the moment. So what that you're going to get is sections like 114. They're going to have people who are West Ham fans who used to be at the bowling which is going to help sort of calm it down again. And they won't be wading in in the sort of heavy-handed way that they were at the start of the season. And that's very, very good. But the club have, have put out an appeal for old stewards to come back. They want to integrate. Um, they've got to have some training. They, you know, it's like these days, health and safety and, and all that. So they've got to tick all the boxes, get the necessary training. But the club are willing to do that to, to help with all that sort of thing. So that can only be good news because we need... We need to make it feel a bit more West Ham. Now, staying on the stadium topic, there's been queues, huge queues outside just before kickoff. And what they're trying to do is get people through. They've been caused by lots of body searches. Obviously, the height and security, they're trying to uh, make things a little bit more secure at the London Stadium. They've invested in loads more of the scanner things. And also, they've uh, devised a system whereby you can, if you're a dad and you've got your kid with you, you might be able to get through a little, a little quicker. And, and they've sorted out the child searches. But there seems to be somebody who's noticed a loophole here and is clearly trying to exploit this little thing here and has come up with quite a cunning and sneaky way to get in. So there he is. I would expect a lot of you to be using that technique, putting on the old puffer jacket, crouching down and walking in. And you might even get in on a £99 ticket if you do that. The next section we're going to look at was loan players. And it's something, again, that was flagged up a little while ago. And it was, we've got Janai Gordon, Tony Martinez, Joss Cullen, Martin Samuelson, George Dobson. Reese Oxford has recently gone out to Reading. We're going to be discussing that on our Cup of Tea show, actually. So tune in for that. And what Clara and Hugh are doing is a little report. Now, this was a couple of weeks older because I've been taking a couple of weeks to get all these clips together. In future, I'm going to need your help to, to try and give me as many clips as you possibly can and flag things up. Um, but Brace the Hammer have done an up-to-date one, which was only yesterday, and they've basically analysed everybody and how they're doing. There's lots of them not playing, by the way. Reese Burke's not playing. Samuels is not playing. Oxford, as I said, wasn't playing. But somebody that is playing is Josh Cullen at Bradford, and they are very, very happy with him, as you'll see from this clip. We got it from the start. It's better than they done. We've got Joshua Cullen. We've got Colin, Joshua Colin. I just don't think you understand. We got it from West Ham. It's better than Zidane. 
Yes, indeed. Yes, we do. Well, we don't. They do. And they seem to be enjoying him. He's getting rave reviews. So maybe we'll see a bit of him at West Ham next season. Tony Martinez, who has been absolutely killing it in the reserves, under 23s, whatever you want to call it, this season. He got a loan move to Oxford and he made his debut, came as a substitute in their 3-0 win in the FA Cup. One of the Oxford fans took this footage with his mobile phone and, and caught the goal. If you look, it's uh, you'll see the Ball just sort of coming over. Lovely glancing header. Absolutely crazy. Mental scenes just to just goes to show no matter what team you support, you just go as mental as anyone else when your team scores. Well done, Tony Martinez. Let's hope he um, keeps it up. I think he made a substitute appearance in the most recent game as well. Now, talking about people filming things on mobile phones, you've got to be very careful when you take your mobile phone to a sporting event, as this lady found out. Nasty. That'll teach her to check the half-time scores. But I'm going to play that again. This time, what I want you to do is I want you not only to watch the lady who seems to be absolutely transfixed with whatever's going on on her mobile phone, but watch the guy to her right. Watch his attempts to try and save the poor woman. Not exactly cat-like reflexes. Yeah, a bit slow there, mate. A bit slow. Um... Yeah, maybe Arsenal could have done with him in goal against Bayern Munich. Right, just on the scouted players, we've um, we've been scouting a few, and there's one that grabbed my attention in particular. Again, it was um, it was ex-employee. This fella's name is Thomas Lamar. He's very very good. I've not really been able to embed any of the footage. I did look at some of the YouTube footage and didn't quite actually manage to get it in in time to to do this video and get this video out. But he looks really, really skillful. If we are looking at him, then that would be something quite exciting. Really looks good. Okay, now that's somebody that we were scouting. Now, we also did bring in a couple of players in the transfer window. As you know, they both seem to have settled quite well. Now, the first player was obviously Jose Font, and we've also brought in Robert Snodgrass. But Jose Font has a new song. Let's have a little listen. Jose Fonte, baby! Jose Fonte, There you go. That's the new song. Not the most complicated of lyrics, and I do believe his name is Jose Font, but let's not let the name get in the way of a good song. So for the purposes of the song, it's certainly Jose Fonte and particularly Baby. Let's just listen to it one more time. I can assure you that no alcohol was consumed in the filming of this, which was actually done on our boats, there was a it was a bit of a party after the last game and before, by the sounds of things. Jose Fonte, baby! Jose Fonte, oh! I think it might catch on. Now, West Ham are not the only team with a song. There's another London-based team who also have a song, but I don't think it's going to catch on in quite the way that the Jose Fonte song will catch on. Um, this one is about Harry... K well, you know what? I'll leave it with you. You watch it. This goes out to a man like Harry Kane, fam. Harry Kane. Said you just got Kane. 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 Kane. Said your crew's got weapons, got an arsenal. But Kane always seems to smash it against Arsenal. Your girl's looking good, you got an arsenal. And then it's fire in the pot when I spit Barsenal. Oh! Cause you just got Kane! Just got Kane! You just got Kane! Just got Kane! You just got Kane! Kane! Said your girl's called Chelsea, so I caned her too. Best in the league. You should see these. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite enough of that. I think. Um, what can you say? Uh, you you wouldn't want to bump into him down a dark alley, which or maybe you would. I don't know. They're um, 
they're quite an embarrassing bunch really aren't they now i was initially going to include that in the video but i lost the file so when I went to try and retrieve the file, I couldn't find it. So I just put in Google search, embarrassing Tottenham fans, and the list was very, very large. So I think we can probably get away with doing one of those every week. Now, those are not the only embarrassing fans. I've managed to find one guy. Now, you all probably have a normal match day ritual or something that you might find. Lucky, you might wear your badge to every game. Lucky pants, shirt, scarf something that you wear this guy has taken it to a whole new level um there he is i don't really know what to say about this fella except he seems to have a half and half kit that's half arsenal and half arsenal now um I don't know what's worse, the fact that he's actually <laughs> gone to the game like that or the fact that he seems to be taking offense that somebody's taking a photo of him. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, if you're going to get dressed up like that, then people are going to be looking at you. I can tell you that much. Uh, there's also found another picture of him here as well. This is him stood on a concourse at the Emirates. And, um, well, it, I don't wish to be harsh, but it appears nobody's talking to him. He's, he certainly looks to be outside of the conversation, that's for sure. But um, I don't think he's quite the worst one. There is one person who was taken wearing the kit inappropriately, or let's say an inappropriate place. That guy was just a bit of a plonker, really, but he has worn it to a football game. There's another fan. It's another Arsenal fan, I'm afraid. I'm not picking it up. <laughs> it just came up. Um, I just... I'll just leave it here. There's no words need to be said here. Hmm. Uh... I don't know how he got away. I, I could just imagine my wife saying to my wife, I'm going to wear a West Ham kit to the wedding. I don't think there would have been a wedding, in all honesty. But I really like that. And what I'd like to do is, I think we'll leave West Ham fans out of it. But aside from that, what I'd like you to do would be to send me any pictures you can see of, of grown men wearing full kits. I mean, it's just not... A kid is, is absolutely fine. Wear your boots, wear your shorts, go there, have a bit of fun. A grown man in a full kit with the shorts and the socks. I don't know. I, I'm I'm yet to be convinced. <laughs> I think there's something slightly odd about it. So if you could send them to me, that would be fantastic. Please don't clog up the Hammers Chat Twitter. So if you send them to me at, at Gonzo Big Nose, I'll put the thing down there somewhere. Um, send them to me and any other clips that you find amusing if there's something that you've noticed on social media then tag me in i'll credit you for it and hopefully make the show a little bit bigger a little bit better and we can sort of get it a little bit more interactive as well right i'm going to finish there and uh so just we've got a cup of tea coming out which please watch we've got it's really dead at the moment in west ham terms we're out of the fa cup so it is in essence our winter break isn't it the team are off having a jolly up in dubai so yeah there's not a lot going on please follow us uh, uh, on our twitter hammers underscore chat come on to the forum if you want to chat with us directly that's hammerschat.com where is it there you go up there somewhere and you can join us on facebook or even just comment on the videos below we'd really love you to subscribe at the end of this video i'll put a little end slate on there's a little round button with the hammers chat logo on it click subscribe and then that'll just notify you of any future videos right that's about it for now I, i'm um I've, I've not got a catchphrase i've i've not got a catchphrase for the end uh this is a brand new show i'm really making it up as i go along you tell me you tell me what catchphrase i should really say at the end and what to finish on so until next time i've got no catchphrase we've got no football Thank you for watching. If it goes out to a man like Harry Kane, fam. Harry Kane. Said you just got Kane. You just, just got, got Kane. Kane. You just got Kane. You just got Kane. You just got Kane. Said you just got Kane. You just got Kane. You just got Kane.